Nothing. You see, he had a corkscrew penis. He was, um, he was just like walking around on the main road in like a seaside in the town. And right. yeah, and cars would look See, that's not nudism, is it? That's <laughs> mental illness. <laughs> yeah, he's just a bit d dear. Yeah. 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 So right. I tell you, one of your favourite programmes, isn't one of your favourite moments just that, that one with the hot air balloon? And it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, bad, it just yeah. goes, it's like oh, in you Sydney, know sometimes when it's at a carnival. Oh, your, his favourite um, programme when he was little, he used to watch it for hours, was that little girl by a blackboard with two toys. Yeah. He used to love you that, didn't you? enjoyed that, didn't you? Right, listen, here's something else I learned in the week, and we can use this if you want to give away the Incubus tickets. Go on. Uh, there's a oh, I must have, there's some tickets to give away later. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it is later. Go on. Who, 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 I don't know. Yeah. We're going to save it as a surprise. Go on, Carl. Oh, have I ruined it? No, go on. Crack right. on, mate, crack on. Um, yeah, it was a pro program about the uh, the body. Um, and wh what is it, right? Barbie doll. Why couldn't that be real? Yes. <laughs> Play a record, Carl. I, I, knew, I do know the answer, actually, I have to say. What do you yeah, mean, really? why couldn't it be real? If, if the Barbie doll was, like, a real person, right. it wouldn't work out. <laughs> I don't understand the question! If you do, this is what worries me! I don't understand the question. Why do you understand it? Because it's one of those facts which I've heard in the past, but... So therefore, because I know the answer, the question makes sense. But unless you unless you know the answer, the question makes no sense. Well, of course it does. That's what's brilliant. Is it worth using for the tickets? Do you think is it that good? It's not a real question, Carl. I don't no, think it, it can count, really. It can't be a real Why? question. Well, but because I, it's like one of those things about oh, a man went into a field and died. Why? You have to ask questions. You go oh, because it's supposed to know. But well, I've got a million explanations. Um, okay, she'd be hollow. Do you know what I mean? No, he's right, actually. There, it is too vague. Why don't you give the answer, and then you'll understand what what your question is. What was the answer? She'd have to walk around on all fours because no, physically, the proportions of Barbie yeah. could yeah. not be replicated on a real human woman because she just couldn't have those di dimensions. Yeah, we know. Yeah, but but that, that, that you know what I mean? Yeah, same goes for Fred Flintstone. Do you know what I mean? His head's half his body. It's a cartoon. Right. Um, Don't have a go at Carl. He's the K-Man. People love him. Sorry. God, they're going to alienate yourself. I'd like some hip-hop, Steve. Seriously. He's laying into I'd like some hip-hop, Steve. We'll come up with a question. We're giving away some Incubus tickets later. Look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, it's time for Hip-Hop Hooray! Uh, this is from... Um, <laughs> ooh, hey, yeah. ooh. hey, this is from Adela Soul's ni uh, 2000 album. Not sure. the current one. Art Official Intelligence, yeah. Mosaic Thump. Yeah, uh, they've changed a bit, haven't they? They have, and a lot of people have dismissed Ella Soul, but there's still some tracks you can dig out. Not as jazzy, but this is a soul tip to this, this show. This is a wonderful yeah. track. Uh, this is With Me. Play it, Carl. Oh. A live POD or pod, <laughs> Absolutely. As, I, as I call them. Yep. On XFM 104.9, a bit of rock. Who are you? I'm Ricky Gervais. Steve Merchant here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl over there. Now listen, there's a bit of rock there. Yep. Takes us into a competition. We've okay. got Incubus tickets to go Incubus, away. you say? Now, I like Incubus. Okay. I mean, for, for what they are, but, you know, I'm a bit worried about all this crossover, this new metal, and these people coming out that are a bit like Pearl Jam, and a bit, all oh, this sort of, oh, I'm, I'm not too sure about it. I'm not still not convinced, but... Incubus have got a bit of style about them. Uh, well, you know the um, the competition we just ran there, the phone in, ask kind of thing. People were phoning up. One person said, "What do you think about new metal?" Carl just quick as fast went, "I hate it." <laughs> exactly. And he threw a question right back at them. And went, "Do you listen to that in the morning?" She went, "Yeah." He went, "Wow." You see, in the morning I like Ash. In the evening. I might listen to. Um, I think he said Magic. Magic FM. Yeah, but I love the fact that he is now. We've we've. Put him on a pedal. He's, he's, he's happy with his own opinions. Before he was like, oh, I don't know. And now he wants to tell the world. He'd be down at Hyde Park Corner tomorrow, wouldn't he? And they're going, right, who wants to know what I think about, I don't know. Uh... At two o'clock, I will listen to the Human League. <laughs> at two Today at 4.13, I had one apple and listened to Primal Scream. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, oh, no, you're, you're a great bloke, Carl. We better stop now because, you yeah. know, we're going to make you into the new job. There'll be more from Carl next. This is a very last question that someone, this is Jim, he's emailed in. He says, does Carl think that the wa that Waterworld, Mad Max, Judge Dredd or similar films present an accurate portrayal of what a post-apocalyptic world <laughs> might be like? 
<laughs> How do you imagine what the world will be, Carl, when I the, the bomb is dropped? So I've got no comment. You've okay. got no comment? Okay, let's, let's forget the films. What do you think the world might be like if there was, say, a nuclear war and we had to survive underground for a while till all the, um, you know, uh, uh, waste went away and we could come up and we could eat fruit again and, oh, there was, oh, it was all weird and we had to start from scratch? I'd rather die. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. you? Uh, you? Well, supposing it was sort of like, you know, Britain was just like, it was, all the buildings had gone, right? Oh, there was some, some bit of scavenging, there was like, and we hid underground and we came out, you know, sort of, in ten years' time. Don't keep shaking your head, you know, the question. You can go, no, 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 rather die. And it was fine, you lived on tin fruit for a few years, right? Then you had to come up and start again. You had to, and you had to find other civilizations. I'd want that thing that, um, is it, is it Walt Disney had? Sort of, cryogenically put me in, put me in a fridge thing and say, look, wake me up when it's all built again. Mm. I can't be doing with that, walking around with a hard hat on all day. Yeah, what would you do? Set an alarm clock? You're, you're the only person, what, you get in a fridge and even know, if you find this, do not disturb till 2012. <laughs> you know what I mean. No, I, well, yeah, but saying that wasn't, well, I mean, what would you do first? You'd just come out, right, come out into the light, it was just like, it was like, you know, um, Saxon Britain, there was nothing, you'd have to start again, what would you do? What would you do first? I'd probably go and see where I live now to see what's left of it. <laughs> I know how he thinks. <laughs> oh. Carl, if you, if you were the last man on earth, right, yeah. and you had to have one other woman with which to start the human race again, right, yeah. and not your girlfriend, who would you start the human race again with? Which person would you would you want to be? bear in mind? It's not just like the fact that you've got to have kids. You've got to they've got to be able to provide something in this and they, world. And they've they got to be might, leaders. And they might be all melted. And they, they, <laughs> exactly. So they're, and they're beautiful. Just, and they, they've just got one good eye. Uh, but now they can tell what you're thinking because <laughs> exactly. of <the> radiation. <laughs> yeah. They, and and, and, think, and they tried to go through a pod, and there was a there was a fish in there for some reason in their Wellington. I mean, for me, probably. No, what would you rather kiss, a mermaid or a unicorn? <laughs> Carl, quickly. Why? No, sh 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 no, no, I want him to answer my question. He's got a lady's face. Okay then. What would you rather kiss, a lady with um, the body of a fish or the body of a horse? A fish. Wouldn't you? <laughs> this is the best thing in the world. This is like you know when you call a file a rude word, <laughs> yeah. and then the computer goes. Do you want to open tits? <laughs> yeah. You laugh because it's like that's what playing with Carl's sure. like. It's sort of like you input it and it, you always get you, get, you know what I mean. You yeah. sort of get you get more back than you bargain for. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh. oh. Probably only because, though, because I've seen films like that one with that Hannah Darrell or whatever her name is in, and she looks yeah. alright. I've never seen Hannah a film Darryl, yeah. with a woman with a horse's body. Maybe if I've seen one, I might change my mind. If okay. C right. Can you email us a picture of a woman with a horse's body? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ricky Dot Gervais at X of him. Or do they yeah. do they exist? Anyway. Do you reckon unicorns exist, Carl? No. no. Look, let's play another song then, because I think we were going to give away some incubus tickets. We seem to have got sidetracked. Okay. Um, oh, well, I'd like to play my song for the lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not ashamed of this. It's an early Bowie track. It's his his sort of you know version of soul. It's off the Young Americans album, and it's a beautiful song called "Can You Hear Me." David Bowie. That is best there. Yeah. Young Americans, can you hear me? You, you said it when the record was on, Steve. You're not going to hear this sort of eclectic mix of me anywhere. Anywhere else, Rick. We go from hip-hop to soul, to hip-hop and soul, to solely type hip-hop. And then some solely hip-hop, hop, hop, hip. And ash. And the joy of it is, Rick, that if people are open-minded enough and broad-minded enough, as yeah. I hope our listeners are, yeah. they're going to be loving this. And we, play, we played early out and last We've week. We didn't care. Sorry. We don't care what he's done since no. or what he's like now. We're not if someone, reputation. I don't judge. I don't judge. You know what I mean? If they Rick, do a good track, can then I tell you this let's now? play that track. I am not interested in what people think's cool. No, obviously. No, I'm interested in what people think is good, Rick. Yeah. Yeah, All yeah. Right. No, I'm interested in what we think is good. I Steve. don't care about what women think is traditionally handsome. No, no. I play by my own rules. Yeah, exactly. You do, don't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. You're not in it for their amusement. I'm not in this game for anyone's amusement. No. Obviously all right. not. Jeez, now, all these women with the, oh, you know, I want to be able to have a conversation. Yeah. I want to be able to have, have an orgasm. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, that was, uh... David Bowie there. Uh, we've uh, we've we've played some great tracks here, but we've got more to come, haven't we? We have indeed. Yes, plenty more to come, Rick. But we're going to give those Incubus tickets we've away. We've got our competition now. 
We were talking about um, people keeping open mind. Now our listeners have got open minds. They're yeah. they're they're like they're not only open, they're blank. Yeah. They're, you know, I mean, yeah, really empty canvases. From the empty ones that have been <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the ones that have been phoning up, I yeah. don't know how they dialed. No. I think they're wrong numbers, or they sat on the phone or something. Sure. Um, and a lot of old listeners are coming back. A lot of people from the old days of XM. Yeah. I don't know. I, they're obviously been allowed out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's carrying the community, Rick. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. now get thrown out of those homes. So or I thought detox centres. Yeah. I thought maybe an old question, something I'd you know, explored three years ago. What excites me is the fact that you know clearly all those kind of needle exchanges mm. and things like that really helping people stay alive, and that's sure. a joy. Sure. 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 You know, that's, sure. That's evidence so, there so, on the phone. Yeah. 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 Now, what about this? Now you know the answer to this. I've done this before. Okay. Right. There is one London station. Wait, we've done this in the last couple of weeks. Oh, you think I'm going to say St John's Wood? Yes. No. Okay. There is one London station that has no vowels. That has no vowels? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. You've not thought this no, through it's at all. It's one vowel. It's one vowel. It is one vowel. So there's, there's one London station with one vowel? I can't remember the answer, though. <laughs> oh no, this is pathetic. <laughs> this is so rubbish. I so want to be on someone else's show. Like Camfield would be good, or just on like Dr. Fox. <laughs> we like Dr. Fox now, Dr. don't Fox we? He's amazing. We like him. I, I, he's, he's come through on that pop star, pop stars tonight. I love Fox. I like, I like his little trunk. He's like, a, he's like a little trunk. And he works out, and he's got a bike and everything. But I like him. He's got, he's up to Mister. He wears too much blusher, and he's, I like his suits. But it's I, the fact that he's, it's like, however hard he tries, he just doesn't look right on the telly. He just I looks know, like a man who's been sewn into that suit. I know, I know. So I tell you what, I saw him once riding here into Capital uh, on his hog, on his Harley. Oh, was that such a yeah. joy? <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, no, we like Foxy. What about Simon Cowell? Oh. What about that Nicky Chapman? Like her. Yeah, what about the other, who's the other one? Oh, Waterman. Waterman. Up and down He's Waterman. a bit of a knob. Wow, come on, you can say that, but he's, no, he he's, 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 he's sold millions of records. None of this talking... So is our price. None what? of this talking is disguising the fact that we still not managed to give those incubators away. Okay, 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 what about questions? this? What about this? What about this? You've got nothing, have you? No. You're running on empty. Yeah. Play a record. <laughs> Highs there on XFM 104.9. Right, we've got a competition question. Steve's come up with it at the last minute. This is just to check if you are a regular listener of the show. Yeah, okay. we would like to reward loyalty. Exactly, absolutely. So, um, last week on the show, Ricky described a story that happened to him uh, back in the 80s when he was making his TV appearance on Razzmatazz with his band. And he tried to, he had to fly out, was it to Newcastle? Yeah. And um, he tried to get on a plane, and a pop act of the 80s tried to help Ricky sneak aboard an aeroplane. But failed. But they failed to do it. At the height of their powers. And they were at the height of their powers. What was the name of that outfit? Should we put them on the line? Absolutely, let's hear well, it. There's, there's the people there already. This is to win Incubus tickets. Please do not be mental. Don't be mental or swear or say anything libelous or nasty. Yeah. Just be nice. You won't, you won't win if you're not. Go on. Hello? Hello? Hi, who's that? Oh, I've got my headphones on, haven't I? Put your headphones on, Rick. I'll just oh. keep her talking. Oh, no. Nice. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Okay, hello. Hi. Hello there. What's your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, where are you calling from? I'm um, Clapham Junction. And do you know the answer? I do. Okay. Is it Bucks Fizz? It was indeed Bucks Fizz. It was the Fizz. <laughs> yeah. It was indeed the Fizz. Well, do you like Incubus? Um, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, you see, if I was interrogating you, <laughs> I, I, I'd go, well, you hesitated. Yes. There's so many people phoning up who are desperate for these Incubus tickets. Please don't make they this are right to you. No, no, to be fair, they're rightfully yours. Right, you... I tell you what, why, I'll have a t-shirt if you give them the tickets. Okay, is that just any old t-shirt or...? No, no. Can we, uh, can we send her a t-shirt? Carl's nodded. Right, we, think you, we can send you a t-shirt. Right, um, we'll get you a t-shirt. How, how, how are you going to do that then, Carl? Because you've got to take her name and everything now. Yeah. <laughs> this is pathetic. This, this is amazing. This happen with Dr. Foxy. Foxy wouldn't do this. Can I, can I say as well, there's a bank, um, there's a train station with one vowel. Yeah, but there's loads on there. He hasn't thought it through. No. Bow as well. There's many. Listen, no. Carl, <laughs> make yeah. a note of a number. It can't have been that. I can't remember it. What was it? I remember I tried it the last time I tried this it. This is a shambles. And I couldn't work it out. Then there was, there was wrong answers. I remember Aldwych came up. Maybe right. it's Aldwych. What's, what? What's oh. Carl doing there? What? Who's he talking to? I don't he's talking to her, but what? Say again? Quick, let's think of something. Come hey, on. Hey, are you still on this line? 
No, she's, he's picked up the phone now. So what so am I doing? Sh- we're giving away, we're, look, we're letting people behind the curtain. Let's keep up this veneer of professionalism. This is so rubbish, Come on, no, 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 don't, don't draw attention to it. Okay, all right. Uh, well, let's just talk and make So, uh, Steve, what, what, what are you doing tonight? Looking forward to pop stars? <gasps> looking forward to a lot. Who do you want to win? I'm glad you've asked, Rick. Um, I'd love to see Darius have a bit of success, but I don't think it's going to happen. Um, I think uh, it's probably going to be the stutterer. I think it is going to be um, Gareth. He has a name there, Steve. <laughs> um, I think it's going to be Gareth, yeah, apparently sure, in the sure. polls in the week he's getting twice and we're back, don't we? Okay. Alright, Carl, um, so, right, okay, so she's getting a t-shirt, is she? Lovely. Right, is we, who's, who's that on the line? Next contestant. Hello? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> An error? I, I mean, we couldn't do this worse. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> hello? Hello. Hello, hello who's that? Who's Dan? Dan, hello, Dan. Danny. Oh, so, do you want to go to Incubus? I'd love to, man. Okay. Hold on, this is pointless because he's just heard the last. Uh, he's heard the answer. Yeah, definitely back says. This is mad. We didn't think this through. <laughs> no, but let's be honest. It, he wouldn't have been on the line if he didn't know the answer. Are you cheating, no. Dan? Dan, he says he's not cheating. For uh, this is fail safe. <laughs> That's fail safe. This is a rigorous. <laughs> I can't Screen believe this. this. Uh, Dan, you're going to Incubus. Ah, uh, cheers, uh, man. Well That's done. Well idea. done. Oh, nice one. Cheers. For cheers. Uh, Carl, what do we have to do? Do we just hang up, or what happens? No, you play a song and. Play a song then. You've got oh. his details. Yeah. Oh, play God. it. Oh. Just what is it that you want to do? Well, we want to be free. We want to be free to, to do what we want to do. Fever, just today. That reminds me of this Christmas where my 51 year old brother wouldn't let anyone near the PlayStation 2 because he was playing Gran Turismo. And he has to build his car up and buy it. He just played it from about six o'clock till sort of three in the morning. Was it really? bought for him or about was three? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, but, but we, we had to watch him. <laughs> <laughs> Why that song particularly? Uh, Why it's that on. Song? It's on it. Oh, it's it's the, I think I think feed a feature all over it, don't they? On the on, right, the, right, on the soundtrack, right. yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Yeah. I was on the tube the other day, Rick, so oh. I was just coming into Finsbury, uh, Finchley Road, Yeah. and uh, I was on the train, I, I, I know you don't travel on the tube anymore, you're no. too famous, but... Um, I, I never did. No, no, fair it's, it's not that I don't really recognise, it's just it's beneath me. <laughs> fair enough. And um, <clears throat> and they're on, on the tube, in the, each carriage, on these newer ones, there are kind of these uh, flaps that are normally locked, closed, and there was one of them that's swinging open, and inside there were various buttons, like on-off, you know, self-destruct, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. But it's like doors operating. Train things. quicker. Exactly. And you were thinking, like, you don't want some, you know, kind of oik, sort no. of fiddling around, pressing buttons and stuff. It could be quite dangerous. Yeah. So I got off a feature and I thought, oh, I'll be a good commuter. I'll mention this to the staff and, and they'll probably, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll thank me for it. And if it's an attractive young staff member, you know, I mean, they never are on the tube. Have you ever seen an attractive member of staff at a tube station? Oh, come on, steady They on. are such freaks. I no, mean, I know that's the pot. They're all, back, they're all from Devon, apparently. They're grotesque people, really. All right, steady on. And uh, so anyway, I went up to this guy. I thought The I'd uniforms don't out, though, do they? They don't. It's pretty grim. And so yeah. I went up to this guy. I said to him, excuse me, I was just on the train there. And um, there was a flap open. I could see all these buttons and things. He went, right. I was like, yeah, well, I just think, you know, it might be, you know, you know wandering hands, a small child or something. You know, right. A small yeah. child? He went, he went, what carriage was it? I said, well, I don't really know what carriage it was. I just, maybe at the next stop, someone should come and check. He went, well, how are they going to check if they know what carriage it's in? <laughs> <laughs> and it's at funny. that point, I just thought, I just wanted to smack him in the face. I just thought, I, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got no reason. There's no gain for me about telling this. It's not going to help me out in any way, not financially, nothing. I'm I just going to help you out, and that's your attitude. I was absolutely I know. Livid. I'm getting so intolerant in my I old age. I won't. I can't uh, uh, stand bad, it. bad service, bad attitude. Just, uh, oh, it drives me mad. It makes my blood boil. And I, oh. Livid. I was one time, I was down in the centre of town. This was after some of the big explosions. The IRA had, you know, various things. And everyone was on kind of bomb alert, very nervous, very scared. And uh, there was a, a, a sort of a bag in the street, you know, this was the centre of London or whatever, and, and my friends and I were a bit edgy, but a bit nervous. And we're outside this pub and we saw the bag and we thought, maybe we should sort of tell, we'll tell the landlord from that. So we told the landlord, right, and he, he came out and he looked at it and he thought, oh, you're right, lads, it does look a bit shifty. Um, and this is what he did, this was his security measure, right, he was going to call the police, but in the meantime, he picked up one of those sandwich boards that advertises what food's being served in the pub, just placed it over the top of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's, I mean, that's chaos. That is what the bomb disposal unit use <laughs> exactly. very often. Like you see them uh, up and down Oxford Street. They're they're not people sell, um, you know selling stuff. Sure. That's just that's so a bomb field. on a bomb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I love the idea because what we did was we moved about 100 yards down the road because we thought if the bomb goes off, we want to see it. That'll be dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to get yeah. injured. <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of like a, a sandwich board flying off into the air, <laughs> embedding itself in someone's head. Yeah. Well, no yeah. one would be injured. Who do I sue? That sandwich board. Well, that was that was Ron, the landlord. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. My God, is that? Is that is that Cumberland Pie for five ninety five? I can't believe I like. <laughs> John, I think there's something more serious. There's a anyway, um, paramedics going. I can't. No, you might be a pie. <laughs> it's pretty... I'm gonna come back here. <laughs> so anyway, so listen. He calls the police, right? And so after a while, about you know, it's like forty minutes later, and I think the police do a good job. I'm not trying to make down on the police. I think it's a, it's a good job, and I I respect the police. But um, this, this police van turns up after about forty minutes of waiting, right? And this this guy leaps out of the van and he goes, "What? You're the guy who reported this, are you?" And we went, "Yeah." He went, "Right." And he looked at the bag, and he picked it up, he unzipped it, and there was just some rubbish in there. And he just, and he just looked, he just threw it at us, he went, there's your bomb for you, and threw it at us, to teach us a lesson, and then got in the van and drove off. And it was like, uh, oh, what, what lesson are you teaching us about what did you being do? Do you, you presumably reported him, did you? Well, of course we're not, what's going to happen, you know, it's not... Do you know what I think? I think he thought it was a bomb. Right. And he was trying to blow you up to teach yeah. you a lesson. Well, possibly. That's just, bad. That is just, really bad. It just winds me right up, stuff like Once, that. Once, right? Uh, <laughs> me and Bill, we, we had sort of, it was about 1983, and we had like extensions and um, cut off t shirts and jeans and. Uh, Sexy. Uh, yeah, you know, like make it all new about it. And we were just eating chips on the corner, right? And this, it was a Saturday, so I assume it was like. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> football patrol, about 12 police, in the car, and they sort of slowed down and looked at us, and he wound the window down, and the bloke driving shouted, you look like a couple of prats. <laughs> Bill turned to me and went, is that an offence? <laughs> and I remember wanting to laugh at the joke, but thinking, that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> that is an they were right. <laughs> no, they were right. <laughs> it's not really a police issue, I don't yeah. think. Someone called into a uh, hey, morning. Guys, if you see anyone looks a bit, uh, you know, the flash of police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, uh, we've heard a bit. There's a bit of a uh, to do. Apparently, a couple of prats are walking round. Yeah, uh, oh. we need someone to go on fashion police <laughs> patrol. <laughs> Send in Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but you know, we we respect the police. Yeah, absolutely. We're not, no, really. I'm not having a go. It's just those few that give them a bad no. name, really. Yeah, exactly. Hey, for it. Hey, my boy, I think the boys in blue do a good job. <laughs> do, do, and do the fireman. Yeah, fireman do especially well. the fireman. I remember once. This is really embarrassing. This is the arrogance of youth, right? In a, in a hall of residence, every time someone did toast. The fire alarms went off. I remember once it was like two in the morning, and we were at the guard side, and it was just toast set off thing. But it it was linked, and about eight fire engines turned up, and I, I they're all coming in right, and I said, oh this is so embarrassing. Why am I telling this? Go on. I just went. There's enough of you. God. And the fireman right away said, he just went shut your mouth, man. Yeah. And I thought. Oh God, he's right. He's right. Did you remember ten years later? Yeah, right? that's a horrible thing. What? Right? A tw I know, but I, I when you're eighteen, and... apologise. Oh, to I'm, I'm so big. sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I never did oh. stuff like that. Oh, that is twice. I was too busy saying, "Can I try on your helmet?" <laughs> 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 oh dear. Oh, we better play another yeah, song, isn't we? Oh, this is uh, um, a great track. This is uh, Groove Armada. It's from uh, the album Goodbye Country, Hello Nightclub. It's the opening track. It's all called uh, Sun Toucher. I think you'll like this, Steve. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Groove Armada there. And Sun Toucher. Did you like that? I didn't mind it, actually. I didn't realise you were a uh, Groove Armada dance music fan. Well, no, Jane played that music. I hadn't heard that before, but I loved it immediately. That, that, oh, it's great. It's like soundtrack mixed with a little bit of. Sure, sure. Hip hop and oh, it's all it's all like a big, all a big it's mix. A big pot. Yeah, yeah. I just wish that's what the world was really. So like, we could so just, like, so yeah, like, everyone yeah. could live in harmony. I wish it was an onion. Oh, if only the world were a great big onion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, maybe one day. Well, this is nearly the end of the show. It's, uh, it's been uh, Ricky Gervais on XFM 104.9 with Carl, and uh, it's been a great show. And uh, you know, I've just uh, there's been some laughter, there's been some tears, there's, there's been, been some jokes. jokes. There's been some political satire. <laughs> I like to think so. But above all, there's been some chat with friends. <laughs> and there's been some bloody great music. Let's not forget that. I don't think we need to swear at this time. <laughs> it's play juncture. Yeah. Um, because you make yourself look a cock. 
<laughs> and me look a twat. <laughs> and true. Carl look like a complete... <laughs> Song for ladies. Go on. Um, Rarely do you get a chance to play on a radio station seven, said, min <laughs> seven minutes worth of Led Zeppelin. But screw it, I thought that, hey. you know, it's the end of the show. We don't give a damn. It's Be an amazing song. Be careful with the language. Screw damn and bloody. <laughs> do not a sermon make. <laughs> Rick, hey, it's a beautiful yeah, song. Yeah. If you're not a Zeppelin fan, stick with it. It's not roaring rock as you'd expect. The Rain Song from Houses of the Holy. Oh. See you next time. See you later. <laughs> Hi, Eve's there, on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. He's with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sentences He's all just using the well, traditional English But you put me off, you pointed to yourself, and I just said Steve Merchant. But you know what we know, we do it every week. You introduce me. Yeah. You say with me, and I go Steve Merchant. No, yeah. So no, it's a catchphrase that everyone's waiting to hear it. Yeah, but usually I go Ricky Gervais, and, that, and you go with Steve Merchant. But this time you pointed to you, so I said it. But I didn't say it. I, it caught me off guard, so I didn't use the sentence. Oh, I don't know the way you sit. Right? I've read medically that if you're slouching like that, can you try and describe how you're sat? It's, but you've got the kind of mic. Have you ever seen that picture of when John Lennon was off his head on smack recording Let It Be, and he was lying on the floor at Abbey Road? <laughs> That's basically <laughs> what Rick is getting there. Getting so scared. It's not good for you. That look at the you not you you can't breathe properly in the diaphragm, no. so you're going to get speak badly. <laughs> Listen, I was trying oh. to speak medical stuff there. I'm afraid you were in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What? what are the words to wham rap? <laughs> what are the words to hey, I don't remember wham rap. What the hell's going into you? Hey, sucker. Now there's nothing you can do. Brilliant. I look forward to um, a forthcoming revival of your music career. Yeah. Rick, I had some devastating news last night. Go on. You know when I left you, I was off to buy a PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just, I was totally in the mood for it. Or a PS2, as he said. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which confused him, Grandad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, you know, I, I think I went yeah. in, like, uh, some electrical stop on uh, Oxford Street. Yeah. And, uh, so the thing I just say, the thing about Steve is, is, I wouldn't say he's mean. He hates that. Um, he's careful, right? And he will, he will spend days to get a pound off. Rick, two what? and a half hours I walked around last no. night. I swear to God, I was walking to different shops, right? I went from Oxford Street to Piccadilly Circus back again, along the length of Oxford Street back again, all over the place. Right? I realised I basically couldn't get a better deal than about 240 quid, right, right. for a, a console and a game. So right. I ended up in Virgin Megastore, I bought an uh, Auto Grand Theft 3 or whatever, yeah. and a PlayStation and a memory card or whatever. So I shoot off, and I'm walking off, and I'm going to the tube, and I walk all the way to HMV um, <coughs> on uh, opposite Bond Street, sure. and I just popped in there because I'd forgotten to get something, and I went there and I was walking past the uh, PlayStations, and it went, if you buy a PlayStation 2, you can get Grand Theft Auto 3 with £20 off. Oh. I was absolutely devastated. What did you do? I just, I, 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 I crumbled. I didn't know what to do. I was thinking of taking it back to Virgin Megastore, going, it's faulty. Well, uh, I oh no. before, you haven't got it home yet. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> no, I didn't mean to buy this, though. What did you <laughs> buy? Keyboard. <laughs> exactly. So the problem is when I get it back and I wire it up and that, all I can see is the cars are racing around the car. All I'm thinking is, it's like one of those cartoons when a really hungry bloke could just see his mate as like a big chicken. <laughs> I mean, all I could see on the TV was just a 20 pound note just floating. <laughs> It was an absolute oh no, I'm just devastated by it. 20 quid, I could have bought like another cheap game for that. We went to the, did I tell you this? Rick, we went, we would you give me 20 pounds and then I'll shut up about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we went to the casino once, a group of us, okay, well, and I lost about 100 quid. And uh, it was, it was a, you know, great, it was, it was someone's birthday. Uh, I think it was James' birthday. And Steve, after three hours of gambling, had lost the 20 pounds he got out to play with, right? I was going, you're really gutted, aren't you? You just went, you, have you any idea how much cheese I could get for £20? Yeah. Cold meats. Yeah. For £20. And there it is again last night. <laughs> £20. I'm robbed of £20. Literally, they've taken it from my hand. Yeah. The HMV people. I they've can't taken it. that and they've. I'm going to try and away. think of some things to cheer you up. Should we play some songs? <laughs> Avalanche is there. I never enjoy any record where I think I or a four-year-old could have made it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's cheating. It's musical um, cheating. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. I won't play that again then. All right. Okay. That's done. Yeah. All right. Nice. Shake on it. Yeah. Lovely. XFM 104.9. Kiss on it. 
Because they touch oh. on it. Carl was this morning and he no. said he was soaking wet because obviously it's miserable out. And actually, if you're thinking of leaving the house today and thus missing the show, do not leave because it's miserable out. It's, it's like a weather fun. report as well. We play music, we got chat, we have little jokes, don't we? But Carl um, it's raining. He said he was soaking wet. Yeah. I said to him, I said, Rick would want you to do it. I wanted yeah. to do it. Yeah. Just take your clothes off. Pop yeah. it over there. But do you know what? And he wouldn't. And he said I was going to do it, but I knew you'd say that. But w when you left us in the kitchen when he was making coffee, he went. Yeah, Steve said, if you're wet, take your trousers off. And I thought, hold on, Ricky's not here, what's he up to? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I was talking on behalf of Rick. I phoned him up, I said, he, he's wet, what should I suggest? Well, I said, well, I, you know, I was in his ear, I was, he had earpiece, and I was going, tell him it's bad for him. Yeah. And I could even go, it's bad for you, you go, well, no, I'm not. Go, tell him it's, it could... Rheumatism. Yeah. It could lead to rheumatism, drop, take him off. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl, speak, no one's heard your voice today. Come on, Carl. Come he on, doesn't want to. No, I know it isn't. We're not, we won't talk to you much, but Go on. it's just nice to say hello to you. Yeah. Right. People, I think people yeah, exactly quite like they tune to in know you're here. So yeah. We've like had some fan mail for I you. like his little face, his yeah. little Moby. I drew a picture of him in the week, just doodling, and he got really insulted. Did he? Why did you get insulted? It wasn't very good. I looked like Ian Canfield. Oh, like. <laughs> oh, wow. that's an insult. Yeah, he just love Canfield. Yeah, I mean they're weird kind of heavy metal ladies. Yeah, but yeah. the, the ones that drink blood. Yeah, yeah, they love Canfield. I thought of you looked like today, but I think you might find it insulting as well. It's just meant to be affectionate. You look, for people who don't know what you look like, you look like Beaker at the Muppets. <laughs> I can't see how that would be an insult. <laughs> ah, oh God, we don't mean put it like that. It is, but it's sort of like I like Beaker. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but you like him because he's a fool. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes. Mm. What did he do? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, you look a bit like that doctor that used to accompany him everywhere. That professor. Oh yeah, a little he's fat, little bro. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Carl, cool. what was it that you told me as well when you came in? Just, just Carl's thought for the day. Okay. Carl, what did you tell me when you came in? Because it was miserable out, and you, and you so made it. It, it is a grim day in London. Um. <laughs> 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 like it already. I was, I was thinking, um, oh. could you imagine dying today? <laughs> Go on, explain more though. Just because when you're dying, yeah. you're always like in your bedroom in your bed. And your always. And your family's next door. Always, yeah. And um, I just thought, can you imagine lying there looking out your window? Because they do that as well, they sort of have the curtains open to get a bit of light on your face. And I just thought, what a day, if this was like your last day, could you imagine? The but they go on. You made it's another. Them, well, no, 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 you made another more, more, even more profound, profound point. You said if instead of dying on a rainy day, you'd prefer to. No, if you died on a, on a bit of a, a nicer sunny day, then it's not so bad. What I'm no, it's your last day looking out on the world. Yeah. And it, look at it. Don't you agree? Yeah. I, ca I thought that was a beautiful point. It was poetic, almost. It was, wasn't it? Because no, no, the point was that, that what, what upset me was that you said you'd been thinking about that today on the way in, and it upset you. But uh, my point was that if you think about the people that are dying any day, it'll upset you. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah, but you don't think about it when, when it's sunny. Because you think, well, they'll be all right today. They won't be that annoyed. You're absolutely annoyed! Annoyed! Think of that. Oh, I'm ripped. No. Oh, I'm dying today. Oh, it, was just, it was just when I got up and opened the curtains, and I thought, look at it. I'm yeah, glad I'm not dying today. Mm. Yeah. Can't play a song. Yeah, interesting. Moral <laughs> Historical Society. Watching Xanadu on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. See, it doesn't work if you say with me, Steve no, Merchant. I've got to say either. I've either got to say with me, Steve, or you just go with Steve Merchant. Sure, sure, sure. See what I mean? Okay. It's not as easy, is no, it? No, it's not. No. It's not as easy as it seems. You know this, right? I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> radio show. Oh, yeah. We yeah. do, right? Well, we just come in and we don't plan them. We just sort of like chat. And it, it, they still pay us. It seems yeah. good, Omar. So we just do this all day. Or all day on XFM, or or, or just get a like, get a license where it is just it's Ricky and Steve. FM, <laughs> and we just chat, and we go, what are you doing there, Steve? Just having breakfast. We go, all right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what are you doing there, Steve? I'll just clean the windows, isn't it? And we have a little chat, and we go, I'm oh, just reading the paper. And we just talk, and we play records. For 24 hours a day? Yeah. I mean, have you spotted any flaws in that plan, or? It would be boring after about an hour and a half. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Mm. I mean, this is boring now. No, it's really done 20 minutes. No, because it's just the, it, we were talking about a car having a thought, remember? Yes. yes. And then I had that thought when I went, I went out to get some orange juice, and I had that thought. So maybe this show could be about, let's, let's have thoughts. Okay. <laughs> so we have thoughts? Yeah. Okay, or they could, if we haven't got any, they could phone in with some. Okay. Or email a thought, maybe, if you've got a thought. <laughs> just email yeah. just don't really at xfm.co.uk. It could be a thought about anything. <laughs> but can we not make those thoughts racist or homophobic, though, please? Yes. No, nothing that's going to bring us down, you know? Yeah. Upbeat stuff. Yeah. Go on, Carl. You do, you, just... do you know when you said 24 hours then? Yeah. Do you know how much it takes <laughs> to run one of the escalators on the underground for 20 hours a day? How much it costs a year to do that? To run it how long? 20 hours a day? Yeah, that's what it runs. The, the Is this another of your, your facts? Mm -hmm. These are always These are always substantiated by an independent source, aren't they? They're not just something you overheard on a bus. Am I just just to check? This is fact. Did you read it on a wall? Is so, that so, so, shop? Sometimes I wish this was on telly because when Steve said this, you have these substantiated by an independent arbitrator. Like, Carl just looked at him. Yeah. Like he just spoke in French. <laughs> he just looked like that. It just did. Okay. So anyway, th this this information you've got from a reliable source, you read it on the back of a fag packet or something. No, I think it was in the Metro magazine in the week. Lovely. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Right. The, what's the, and let's just hear it again. How much does it cost? Yeah. <laughs> there's loads of escalators on the in, on the underground. Yes. And they run for 20 hours a day. Yes. Don't tell us how. Tell you what, Carl. That's such a fascinating fact. Don't okay. tell us. Let's play a record, Rick. Okay. And then people can stay tuned if they want to hear this how much is it like, costs. This is like some sort of mental home radio, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I mean, we we are, I mean, we're, we're not mentally ill, we haven't, you know, we have got, haven't had any head trauma, um, we're educated people, yeah. but we come out with just rubbish, gobbledygook, just nonsense, it's like, I can't grasp, I don't know why he started saying, I've no, I've no idea what that thought you just was. Said, you just said 24 hours about doing radio for 24 hours, so I remember, I thought, oh, 20, 20 hours. <laughs> So, so we're now we're now examining the thought processes <laughs> that we all have. Oh before no. we get to, Let's just hear a song. Okay, right. It's half past one, and that film sounds good. Ooh, that film sounds feature, good. Feature, feature. This is where I choose a song from a film that. Oh, that film sounds good. See, and uh, this is um, a, 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 a film that me and Steve both love, and actually he saw it first and got me onto it, and so I love it, and I did. It was Rushmore. It was a great film, and from it features one of my favourite artists of all time, um, The Wind by Cat Stevens, and this is off the first album I ever bought from Teaser in the Fire Cut. This is The Wind from Rushmore. That film sounds good. Feature, feature, feature. Yeah, and then eight or nine failed attempts before his one last attempt, which he will learn he says was successful. Cat Stevens, The Wind. Elegant. That's a beautiful song. The album is is a, a superb album. It's it, it's seminal. It's just there's some great songs on there. I feel like playing another one, maybe a song for the lovers. Maybe do it later. Maybe, yeah. maybe I could do that. Yeah, it's beautiful. I have to say I've first seen the uh, the follow up to Rushmore. If oh, you yeah. enjoy Rushmore, it's this new film, The Royal Tenenbaums, with amazing cast: Ben Stiller's in it, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Gene Hackman in his Golden Globe winning performance. Oh, yeah. Same sort of thing as Rushmore, same kind of style, but a uh, lovely sort of uh, kind of family comedy. Absolute dynamite, and again a brilliant soundtrack. Nico is on there, Nick yeah. Drake, all kinds of treats. Fourth coming in the cinemas, Rick. Are you say the follow-up, is it the it's same not a director? Sequel. It's the same director, same writer, right. some of the same cast. Bill Murray makes another appearance. Is same style. Haven't um, the Swingers lot done another one? They have. Their new film's Made, with the right. same John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn. Again, Dynamite, really good fun. Not as kind of perceptive as Swingers, but certainly as much fun. Have you seen Swingers, Carl? I think so. Is it the one where um, they've got a line in it, they've got a catchphrase in it, haven't they? You're the money. You're money. No, you're so Jeremy. money. That's it. Yeah, 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 I've seen it. Yeah. yeah, I love the fact that I said you're the money. You went no. You went you're so the money. You went yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yours is from uh, what's his name? Yeah, Jerry Maguire. No, yeah. that's show me the money. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen it. Anyway, See, that was really articulate. We had uh, uh, we did a feature. It linked into film. Uh, Steve Love Films did a little, um, you know, uh, 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 off the cuff review. Then it went into gobbledygook again. Yeah. That, <laughs> I can't even say it. You couldn't even say the word gobbledygook. It's, yeah. Anyway, listen. You had an interesting fact you were going to give us, Carl. I don't think we can leave people waiting for this any longer. No. Right. <laughs> um, how much does it cost <laughs> to run one escalator? That's just one. Yeah. <laughs> On a London underground, yeah, it's running 20 hours a day because it shuts for four hours in the night and the cleaning up and that. Yeah. Yeah. How much does it cost to run it for a year? £12. £60,000. 
The trouble with these facts is I, I've got nothing to compare it against. Well, well, think about, like, <laughs> your yearly electric bill. Oh. Well, when you put it like that. When you can... It's a lot, isn't it? When you think you could just use stairs. Carl, play a song. Politics on XFM 104.9. Please, people, just use the stairs. Brothers, star guitar. I'm gonna be honest, Steve. I like the video more than the song. Agreed. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Um, I, I just wish we could maybe tape the bits we're not on air, just because that's when Carl comes into his own. Yeah. He just said to me, I was I don't know what I was doing. I was sort of like pottering around, dancing around, doing something annoying probably. And he just looked at me. I looked around. He was looking at me, and I looked back, and he went, "Have you ever used a Y front properly?" Genius. It's a great question because the answer is definitely no. Definitely no. Has, uh, does anyone use their Wi Fi properly? And by that, I mean get your winky out of the little sort of um, slot provided, as yeah. opposed to like put it to one side or pull them down or yeah. whatever. Has anyone used a Wi Fi properly? I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think I've ever done it. I've never seen anyone in a toilet doing it, Rick. You should be looking. <laughs> I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I caught you. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's actually how you prove people are gay. <laughs> yeah. And get them into this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's a trap. Uh, yeah, it's a trap. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was the trap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gay, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't prove I was gay. I double bluffed you. Because <laughs> I knew the old gay trick. <laughs> I thought it was the old gay lord saying no thing. That is another method. Yeah, there's, a, there's innumerable methods of doing it. That's how Oscar Wilde was caught. Yeah. Yeah. What happened there? Well, the judge went to him. Uh, did you see that film last night? Gay lord say no, and he went no, and they went take him away. Yeah. <laughs> take him down to the cells. Yeah, take him to Reading. It is true. Um, is well, true. it originated in America. Yeah. So many of these things do. Yeah. It's a brilliant point, Carl. I'd like to hear from anyone. Anyone listening is, and I mean, uh, well, they'll just lie when they ask. Yeah. I don't even use uh, sort of flies. No. Usually, I sort of just sort of sort of pull my wife out, uh, my sort of tracksuit. Now, that's why I wear sort of like elasticated waist yeah, pants all the time. Exactly. Just sort of Speed. like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You got to get in there with the minimum of effort. Yeah. We and out. Sure. Sure. Often I won't shake. No. Well, no. To my detriment, because it often <laughs> leaks out a little bit later. Oh. Ever been out on a date with a girl where it's just trickled down your leg and you wish it hadn't, and you're thinking, <laughs> what if she gets my trousers off later? She might smell and see it. What? <laughs> like what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I said there. <laughs> right. Uh, Rick, I had for Christmas something which I think might excite you and interest yeah. you, because I know you're obsessed and interested by facts. Yeah. Don't fiddle with the microphone. Well, I was just looking that. at what it was underneath it. Stop, listen to what I'm saying. I know, no, listen, let me explain. People could hear you moving the microphone. Could they? Yeah, I can hear it in my headphones. You know, it's the little pop shield that goes over the mic. Yeah. I was going to see where the, what the, what way the mic was facing, so I just had a look. Who cares? No one's interested. Leave it. Carl, I'll tell you if it's a problem. Right. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is a book, uh, it's just facts and trivia. It's edited by Sir Isaac Asimov, who oh, I think's yeah. dead. So I don't know when my parents bought this book. I assume it's from a second-hand shop or something. Right. It's got on, but I got it for Christmas. I keep meaning to bring it in, because there are... Generally, the facts are quite sensible in here. And I like to think if Isaac's been involved, they're probably substantiated. It's not like, kind of, just this nonsense on the web. Or, I think or this is probably... Or crucial. up in Greg's The Bakers that <laughs> exactly. Carl gets most of his facts from. <clears throat> the ancient Egyptians trained baboons to wait on tables. <laughs> Carl, fascinated. That's fantastic. What, 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 what my point about that is, why did they stop? Yeah. It's, ge it's a genius idea. Did, Would you not want to go to a restaurant where they have baboon serving? No, I'll tell you what happened. <laughs> it might have been like the Planet of the Apes and they sort of rebelled. One of them could talk, one of them could take his order, and one day went, went um, uh, do you want fries with that? And the bloke got really annoyed and said they're answering back, and then there was a, some sort of rebellion. Right, 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 yeah. right. The Planet of the Apes isn't true, is it? It's not, Sorry, it's, not, it's, it's not a documentary. Right, okay. I wonder, because what I like the idea of having baboons is the fact that I reckon they're like, I have tr difficulty, and I'm sure you do, Carl, like, working out that sort of 10%, you know, on a bill. Yeah. I reckon the booms would find that particularly hard. I reckon you could get away with under-tipping them all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not leaving enough and just legging it. <laughs> exactly. They go away and you go, sucker. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I'd love to see yeah. some baboon <laughs> restaurants. If there's yeah. any restaurateurs out there, so take a comment or someone. If you do go, go to a restaurant and you've been waiting on those, please don't order the banana daiquiri, because it comes half-eaten. They can't help their little selves. They really can't. They're okay with, like, you know... Beef and steak and chips and all that. But you know, there's a little bag. I go, do you buy? Can you imagine that? The baboons serving 
at waiting tables. It's genius. Just stop to think about that. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. It's absolutely dynamite. Yeah. See, zoos would be a lot more popular if there was like the canteen. You could go. If they were serving tickets to two. Uh, yeah, one child. Well, okay, go through there. Okay. I think they should do other things, like in you know, in the Flintstones, they used to mix cement in that bird's kind of pelican. pelican yeah, yeah. Just, we should start doing that again. Yeah. <laughs> because that also happened in ancient times. <laughs> yeah, exactly. According to the Flintstones. Be yeah, before they had proper cement mixers, that's what <laughs> they did. That was how they it, did it. Definitely. Just, yeah. Just uh, animal facts. I remembered one in the week. Um, Go on. There was. Do you know them two gay American men who have have tigers? Well, they're not necessarily gay. They're not. They? No one actually knows if they are gay. Yeah, or not. They are. All right. Okay. Well, yeah. The, okay. Gilbert and George, is it? No, that's those it's artists. Like, <laughs> yeah. They're called Siegfried and Roy. But, yeah. but anyway, who, but who may or may not be gay. Yeah. And if they are, so what? And if they are, so what? But yeah. if they're not, uh, and they yeah, don't. I look. just said that, so you knew, knew what I was talking about. Yeah. Sure. Okay, the two gay ones, those yeah. Go on. Two possibly gay ones. Yeah, let, let's not worry about libel law um, anymore, then. Or, yeah, if you shave on. a tiger's head. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Well, okay. You've got to treat that sentence with a lot more reverence than you did. <laughs> Think what you're saying. If you shave a tiger's head, not just its head, its whole body. If you... Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So I thought you, I thought you were getting weird. Go on. Then, yeah, if you shave a tiger, yeah, go on. It's still stripy underneath. 